Hey guys, what's going on? Rodolfo here. So today we're gonna talk about keyboards, but not just any keyboard, this keyboard. But before we unbox this and talk about it and see if it's a good keyboard for developers, let me tell you what makes a good keyboard in my opinion and what I'm used to working with. So as you're about to see, I have a very particular taste when it comes to keyboards. This guy I bought in 1999. It still works, but the keys get kind of stuck sometimes, even though I have already uh, opened it up and cleaned it. And besides that, it's a wired keyboard. I'm trying to get more wireless stuff. So once I was ready to stop using this, I got this keyboard that you're seeing right now, which was complete trash and just broke it which is why I'm showing you as a print screen and not the actual keyboard. I don't have it anymore. I just threw it out because it completely broke. Next, I got this. So Microsoft released this keyboard um, a few years ago. I got it in 2014 and I absolutely love this keyboard aside from the fact that it doesn't have a numpad but it does come with one that's detached from it and it also uses one of these guys so it is wireless but it isn't bluetooth it needs this receiver to work which takes up a usb port anyway so when microsoft released the bluetooth ergonomic surface keyboard i had to get it and I'm sad I did. This is probably one of the most flaky keyboards that I have ever used on a Mac at least. It is Bluetooth, but like it, sometimes it loses connection. Until a few OS's ago, it was a pain to change the modifier keys. And for some reason, if I leave the computer for a while and come back, it's like the shift key has been pressed and is being pressed. And I just, I need to, turn it around, open this, change the, like, take the batteries out, put the batteries on again, and then it's gonna pair and come back to normal. So when Logitech released their ergonomic keyboard, I couldn't wait for it to be available in Brazil so I could get it, and that's what we are going to unbox now. So before anyone asks, this is absolutely not sponsored, unfortunately. I would love if I didn't have to pay for this but I did pay for this with my own money this channel is small uh, there is no chance that this is a sponsored uh, unboxing and review so let's open this and see what it looks like inside so here we have it Very nice packaging. Let's set aside the keyboard for a minute. Manual. And here they have their unifying dongle thing, like the Microsoft keyboard, but this one is not mandatory. It is a Bluetooth keyboard, but if you want to use this on a computer that doesn't have Bluetooth or if you're having Bluetooth issues, then you can use this. And the good thing is that I can use this for the keyboard and the mouse. Um, so I can use one to control both. Here we have just some instructions. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's get rid of the box and take a look at the keyboard. So it feels very, like a very nice keyboard. Um, I'll have to do testing, of course, but is gonna look very slick with the mouse and the reason why I like these kinds of keyboards is just that you can put one hand in each side and you can have your wrist be straight when you use each side of the thing and it's not like this with a square 
uh, regular keyboard, like MacBook keyboard or uh, mechanical keyboards and stuff like that, where you have this, which is what causes uh, pain and RSI issues in your wrists. So this is for that. So unboxing done, give me two weeks and I'll tell you guys what I think. Okay, so previously I said that I'd spend two weeks with the keyboard, but what ended up happening was I spent about a month or so with it mm -hmm. to get a really good feel for it. And I really, really like it, but it's not perfect. So let me give you a rundown of what it looks like, what it can and what it can't do, and what I like and what I don't like about it. First off, let's talk about the design. So what, one of the things that I really like about the design of this keyboard is how similar it looks to the MX Master. And even though they are not sold as a combo, I think that they look great together. And if you like having a nice, good looking setup, I think that this combination does look very good and looks very similar and symmetrical. The palm rest is really nice. It's very comfortable, it's firm. I think it's made of memory foam and rubber or something, so it is comfortable, but your hand doesn't sink too much. It has the specific keys for Windows and Mac, and it works out of the box with either. Unfortunately, it's not backlit, so what you're seeing here is just the painted letters on top of the plastic. Unlike my previous Microsoft keyboards, the battery door is not magnetic, and alongside where you put the batteries, there is a place to store the unifying dongle. As far as connection goes, I had absolutely no Bluetooth issues like I had with the Surface keyboard and I tested it with the unifying dongle as well with the keyboard and the mouse going through the dongle and it works flawlessly as well. In terms of ergonomics, the front of it is a bit taller than what I was used to with the Microsoft keyboards and at first I thought it was a bit less comfortable. Uh, it took some getting used to and I think it's fine now. Um, I think I got used to it already. It also has adjustments in the front to make it even taller, so if you are a tall person using a table that is too low for you, you have two types of adjustments in front of the keyboard to make it taller. And then there is the typing experience. So I think it's great. I think the key travel is awesome, uh, maybe even better than the Microsoft Surface ergonomic. But the keys seem a little narrower, so I was getting some typos in the beginning. And again, I've got used to it and I'm not making as many mistakes anymore. So what do I like about it? Well, as I said, the overall design combined with the MX Master 3, I think it looks really good. I think it looks better than the Microsoft keyboards and this is one of the aspects that I very much like about it. The palm rest is very, very comfortable. And so far, it seems a little bit easier to clean than the Microsoft ones. The Microsoft ones would get stains from resting your hands on them uh, for a long period of time and you just could not clean those off. So I'm hoping this one is better. So far, it seems that way. I've only cleaned it once, but everything came off easily. It has very good Mac compatibility. This is something that the Microsoft keyboards never had. So it was pretty easy to set up. It has the keys already mapped. As I said, I had no connection issues. Even when the computer is sleeping, you type on it, the computer wakes up. It doesn't lose the connection like the Microsoft ones did. And you can connect up to three devices. So you can have those set up and just move between them, like the Mac and the iPad, for example, and just move between them by pressing a key. The option between using Bluetooth and the unifying dongle is very nice, especially considering that the unifying dongle can drive all your Logitech devices. So if for some reason you do need to use your keyboard and mouse with a computer that doesn't have Bluetooth or the Bluetooth connection is not working fine, then at least you have this option and it doesn't become useless. Next is the ergonomics, which I found very comfortable. The angle of the split and the key arrangements I thought was great. The media keys mirror the MacBook's keyboard, so you don't have to learn new positions and you don't get confused when you use one or you, when you use the other. It's always in the same position and it's nice because it's what you're already used to. And the numeric keyboard is also a plus, so you can do a lot without having to take your hands off the keyboard. And the typing experience is great. Now, 
If you use mechanical keyboards and you're used to them, you might disagree with me here, but to my taste at least, I thought it was very nice, I liked it a lot, I think the travel is great. And the mechanism, I think it's a Caesar mechanism, but I've read somewhere someone saying it's butterfly. I'm not quite sure, but it doesn't have that flimsy feel when you tap the edge of the key that it wobbles. It's very firm, it's very steady, so I like it a lot. The typing experience is very good in this keyboard, and it's very quiet. This is what it sounds like. But as I said, it's not perfect, so here's what I don't like about it. The first thing I don't like is that it doesn't have an integrated battery like the MX Master does. So the MX Master I can just plug in and recharge and be ready to go. But the keyboard uses AAA batteries, so this is something that I don't like about it. And also the fact that the battery door is not magnetic, so it might be easier to break or for something to happen than the Microsoft ones. Then there is the fact that it's not backlit, and for the price of it, which is $129 in the US, I think it should be. The extended Magic Keyboard, for example, is about this same price and it's all aluminum and it does include a battery. So even though the Magic Keyboard doesn't have backlight, if you compare the build quality and the fact that it has a battery and it's aluminum and this one is plastic and without a battery and all that, I think that they could keep the build quality the same, not have metal, continue being plastic, but have some of these nice things like either a battery or a backlight. Next is the fact that the palm rest is not detachable. It looks like it is from the front, but if you look in the back of the keyboard, you just can't take it off. And it would be nice if you could, you know, it would just make it easier to clean. And in terms of typing experience and ergonomics, as I said, it's a bit taller than what I was used to, and I do prefer the angle of the Microsoft ones, especially considering that this keyboard already has the switches that can make it taller, so I would prefer if the front was lower like the Microsoft ones, and then you could use the switches to make it taller instead of already being kind of tall from the get-go. But it isn't a big deal. I'm pretty much used to it right now, I just prefer the old one. The keys are a bit narrower than the Microsoft Surface one, and I would prefer if it was just a little bit larger, but as, again, I'm getting used to it and I'm not making any typos and mistakes anymore, so it's gonna be fine. So this was it. Overall, I'm very, very impressed with this keyboard. I like it very much. I hope it lasts a long time, and I'm just, very happy with this purchase. If you are looking for an ergonomic solution, I absolutely recommend it. I'm gonna leave a link for it down below and let me know what you think. Uh, which keyboard do you use? Are you more into mechanical ones? Do you think that ergonomics is important in your setup? What do you do to make it more ergonomic? Let me know in the comments and if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. It really does help the channel a lot. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.